Hello everyone. This is my sixth video on X-rays in pediatrics. Today I am going to show you some of the abdominal X-rays with intestinal obstruction. This is the X-ray of an infant who was admitted with the complaint of known bilious vomiting since last one week, and the characteristically vomiting was after every feed, almost after. 15 to 30 minutes after every feed and there was a significant weight loss and also the child was having the sign symptoms of dehydration and mother has noticed that decrease urine output since last one week and in, in this x-ray you can see this is the stomach air so abnormal radiological finding is dilated stomach with absent air in the other part of the abdomen so paucity of the air in the intestine with dilated stomach is characteristically seen in the pyloric stenosis so the diagnosis for this x-ray is infantile hypertrophic pyloric stenosis and the name of this radiological sign is single bubble sign in usg abdomen pylorus transfer thickness will be increased and it will also be elongated because of the hypertrophy of circular and longitudinal muscles of the pylorus so in usg abdomen there will be a string sign because of the narrow and thickened and elongated pylorus so the parameters whenever there is a length more than 17 mm and the transfer muscle thickness more than 4 mm it is suggestive that patient is suffering from pyloric stenosis these are the some other x ray this is a x ray of an infant who was having the pyloric stenosis so again you can see the dilated stomach and paucity of the air in the other part of the abdomen and this is the x ray of an adult with the gastric outlet obstructions so whenever there is a gastric outlet obstruction patient will have the dilated stomach with absent air in the other part of the abdominal x ray this is the x ray of a newborn who was admitted for vomiting respiratory distress and also lethargic at the time of admission and in this x ray you can see only two air filled bubbles are visible and in other part of the abdomen there is a no gas filled distal bowel is visible so this characteristic finding label as a double bubble sign so abnormal radiological finding in this x ray is double bubble sign and it is suggestive of duodenal atresia so the diagnosis for this x ray is duodenal atresia so whenever there is a double bubble sign with no distal bowel gas as is in this x ray it is suggestive that patient is having complete obstruction at the level of duodenum whenever there is a obstruction before the ampulla of waiter there will be non villus vomiting if the patient is having obstruction distal to the opening of ampulla of waiter then the patient will have the villus vomiting so diagnosis for this type of x ray will be duodenal atresia whenever patient is having characteristic double bubble sign also distal bowel gas is visible with this sign characteristic sign these two bubbles with the air fluid level and some other distal bowel gas is also that means patient is having partial obstruction which is seen in duodenal stenosis or duodenal wave or if the patient is having annular pancreas or midgut volvulus this is the x ray of a newborn who had the bilious vomiting and gastric aspirate and also having the mild abdominal distension and in this x ray you can see there is a three air filled bubbles are visible this first one is of stomach second is of duodenum and this third is of jejunal part and in other part of the Uh, abdomen there is a no bowel gas is visible that means there is a complete obstruction beyond this part 
so the abnormal radiological finding is three air filled bubbles and paucity of the air in other part of the intestine and the name for this sign is triple bubble sign and the diagnosis will be jejunal atresia for the confirmation of jejunal atresia we can go for the barium meal so in this barium meal you can see this is a barium in the nasogastric feeding tube this is the stomach and this is the duodenum and this is the jejunum and beyond this there is a no barium flow is visible so the diagnosis will be jejunal atresia so for all these three characteristic single bubble sign for the pyloric stenosis double bubble sign whenever there is a duodenal atresia or obstruction at the level of duodenum and triple bubble sign whenever there is a jejunal atresia this is the abdominal x ray which is taken during the lying down position ideally for the intestine obstruction we have to take the x ray in upright or standing position so here abnormal radiological finding is dilated intestinal bowel loops which are present in the center of abdomen and characteristically you can see the mucosal folds are present throughout the circumference of this bowel loop so these are the small intestine bowel loops which are dilated it is suggestive of that patient is having a small intestine obstruction whenever there is a dilated bowel loops are present in the center of the abdomen and characteristic mucosal folds are present throughout the circumference it is suggestive small intestinal obstruction and to see the air fluid levels we have to take the x-ray in upright posture so the diagnosis will be small intestinal obstruction now in this x-ray you can see the characteristic air fluid levels are present throughout the abdomen these are the air fluid levels and uh, this is the x-ray of an infant who had the vomiting and gross abdominal distension since last two days so the abnormal radiological finding is dilated bowel loops this is the ascending colon and this is the transfer colon and this is the descending so these are the multiple air fluid levels are present throughout the abdomen so the diagnosis for this x-ray is large intestinal obstruction now how to differentiate large or small intestinal obstruction whenever there is a small intestinal obstruction uh, the dilated bowel loops will be present in the central part of the abdomen as in this x-ray and whenever there is a dilated small intestine then mucosal folds uh, known as volvuli conventis will be present throughout the circumference throughout the entire width of the bowel these uh, folds will be visible so these are the characteristic and dilatation more than 3 cm diameter will be pathological for the small intestine and in large intestine obstruction uh, this uh, dilated bowel loops will be present in the periphery of the abdomen also as in this x ray you can see in the periphery there is a dilated bowel loops with the air fluid levels are there and hostra will be visible throughout the colon and whenever there is a diameter more than 6 cm for the colon it is pathological and for cecal part more than 9 cm will be considered as a pathological this is a very classical x ray and in this x ray you can see these two dilated bowel loops and here no hostra is visible so these dilated loops are of sigmoid valvulus so whenever there is a such kind of abnormal radiological finding we label as a coffee bean sign and it is characteristically seen in sigmoid valvulus now we have to differentiate this condition from the cecal valvulus to differentiate sigmoid valvulus from cecal valvulus in sigmoid valvulus as in this x ray you can see the characteristic coffee bean sign due to dilated two bowel loops and there will be no hostra 
and in other part of the abdomen large bowel dilatation can be visible while in the cecal volvulus only dilatation of one loop with the hostration and a small bowel dilatation will be visible it is very important to differentiate these two condition because in sigmoid volvulus only by platelet tube insertion conservative management can relieve this condition while in cecal volvulus surgical management will be required so this is all about intestinal obstruction thank you so much